As refugees make their way across the border and into the cities, the landscape for human traffickers is changing. The latest figures from May show Warsaw is home to around 300,000 refugees, causing a 15% jump in the city's population. With the population boom, ads like this one are popping up, but officials warn it's not what meets the eye. What are we looking at here? So this is a sign that was um, put up within the refugee center. This one is stating, if you'd like to come to the United Kingdom, here's a QR code, let's get in touch. Um, we can get you there within 48 hours. And why is that such a red flag? Uh, there's not enough information. Also, this isn't how you would get connected with being transported, that there would be no reason for you to have to go through a third party. And this is an example, but you all said you're seeing a lot of posts like this. We are, yep. Complicating matters is the sophistication of human trafficking networks in Eastern Europe. The UN's Office on Drugs and Crime found well-established criminal networks operating between Ukraine, Europe, and Central Asia. The UNODC Global Database shows in 2018, Ukrainian victims were identified as trafficked to 29 countries. Half were identified in Russia and a quarter in Poland. It's definitely organized. Um, sadly, we're seeing more of that as well. In order to meet the needs of Ukrainians who have been coming to the city, refugee shelters have been popping up in order to provide food and temporary shelter. We're on our way right now to meet the Unbound team at one of these shelters. They've been volunteering there. It's about 20 minutes outside of town. No, where where should we put them? Take What's the good everything else down upstairs? Megan Jones is a college student from Waco who's volunteering with Unbound now. We can leave them on the desk, the info desk, where they pick out like where they want to work, where they want to move to. Um, we are at Modolinska, a refugee center outside of Warsaw, and it's one of many in Warsaw and many in Poland. It's just heartbreaking. I mean, lifting those suitcases on the border and realizing that it, they were so heavy because it was everyone's life in those suitcases, and thinking about how they got all the way over here, and then just walking in, and yes, they're safe, um, and they have shelter, but it's not a home. Today, the group is passing out flyers about community groups they're launching. In these groups, we also plan to just be able to inform them about trafficking, and that's just from labor trafficking, that's super um, high risk right now just because they're looking for jobs in a country that they're unfamiliar with. Because of the sensitivity of this topic, the Refugee Center isn't allowing anyone to go inside with cameras unless they go through a lengthy vetting process. So of course we want to honor this. This is their home, even if it is temporary for right now. So we're going to leave our cameras outside and we'll check back in with the Unbound team when they come back. On our second day volunteering at the shelter, we meet Anastasia and Anna. These volunteers are refugees themselves. I hope that one day I will wake up like it was all a dream. Anastasia remembers what led her to leave Ukraine. I couldn't sleep because of the alarms. I was lying in my bed at night, thinking whenever alarms started, I was thinking just uh, that I don't want to die. It was her mom who finally convinced her to leave the country. The company she worked for coordinated her trip, but all she can remember is feeling numb. They like walked with me to the railway station like by hand because first of the first days I was like a child here in Warsaw. I was really afraid and I couldn't like walk and do everything like in normal manner. Anna is from Kharkiv, a city in northeastern Ukraine, where Amnesty International has accused Russia of committing war crimes. У нас прямо возле дома взорвали больницу. И мы с мужем туда приносили 
это связано с моей работой. Я работаю социальным работником, и у меня много в доме было шприцов, мазей, спирта, там, дезинфекторов. Мы пришли в эту больницу, и я увидела много раненых детей, людей, и это был просто, это был ужас и хаос. We were unable to find reports of the explosion near Anna's house, but according to the World Health Organization, there have been at least 200 verified attacks on hospitals and clinics since the start of the war. Это все происходило на моих глазах, и я видела, как детей выносят просто на руках родители. Мы проезжали по улицам и уже видели те дома, в которые, где наши друзья живут, те магазины, куда мы ходим, их уже не было. Они были разгромлены, разбиты. И я как бы по, ну, поддалась панике, я попросила мужа после очередной э, ночи, когда, где мы спали буквально в коридоре, э, принять решение уехать из Харькова. Anna took this video shortly before they left. Я коренная харьковчанка, я там родилась, жила и практически никуда, ну. When I moved there, I felt like a child lost and disappointed and afraid. In Warsaw, the women met unbound volunteers. When they heard that the team was launching community groups at the shelter, they asked to help. Да, бывают моменты просто мы смотрим друг на друга, обнимаемся и плачем. Иногда просто я слушаю, иногда просто я в этот момент молюсь, чтобы Бог исцелил сердце и убрал вот эту просто, вот эти воспоминания, весь тот ужас, который видели дети. The community Anastasia and Anna are helping to build may have a bigger impact than they realize. One of the biggest tips for prevention is to um, not isolate. And so um, in isolation is usually when people are most often exploited. Рабство было как сто лет, как тысячу лет тому назад, так и сейчас, в 2022 году, это есть. Поэтому эта миссия, она очень важна сейчас.